trigger finger click, click, maybe, click, 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 click. Trigger finger can occur in any finger, can occur in the thumb as well. And what happens is you kind of get um, like a locking of the thumb or the finger. The finger starts to click as you flex it, maybe click as you extend it. Um, the clicking seems to be down here and there's often tenderness if you poke down here, you might be able to feel a bit of a lump. There's some really good anatomy that explains exactly-ish what trigger finger is. So trigger finger is one of those uh, problems that kind of gets worse over time. It's one of those problems that's associated with one of my favorite tissues in the body, one of my favorite molecules collagen, connective tissue. Um, uh, the anat I'm, I'm also dissecting a hand right now. I dissect them quite often, but I'm dissecting one right now and I've been reminded by how little spare space there is for anything down here. Um, everything's very tightly held together. Uh, and it might start off as kind of that clicking sensation when you flex and extend the finger. It might be worse in the morning when you first get up and then get better as time as the day wears on, like a lot of connective tissue type uh, disorders. And then it might progress uh, to the point where you get pain down here, you feel that lump that I mentioned, that in fact you flex the finger and it clicks, but then it locks, it gets stuck in place and you, you can't extend it back up again. What on earth is causing that? So it's difficult to straighten. And then the pain might get to the point where it's just painful when you're not moving the finger, it's painful all the time, and so on and so on. So it's something that gets worse over time. So what's the anatomy of this then? Well, another name for this condition is stenosing tenosynovitis. Sounds like a long nonsensical word, but it's a very sensible word. Um, stenosing, that means that uh, you've got like a canal, you've got a tube, it's getting narrower, stenosis. We see stenosis of blood vessels and stenosis of tubes elsewhere in the body. So stenosing, it's narrower than it should be. Tino, synovitis. Tino refers to the tendon. Synov refers to synovial tissues. Itis is inflammation. So it's inflammation of one of those tissues. But th that tells us the anatomy that's involved here. Let's have a look at a hand. So this is the um, palmar aponeurosis. I'm going to take that off and then everything's going to try and fall out. We can see some long tendons here. We have muscles in the forearm, layers and layers of muscle, which cause our fingers to flex when they contract. This gives us great power of grip, great power of flexion. Um, if you've watched any of my vlogs, you'll notice that I often hang from my finger fingertips, like my whole body weight from my fingertips, because I'm a rock climber. So there's a lot of power that can be generated by muscles here because they're long, they're big. This is a nice big compartment. Um, that means we don't have to store big muscles in here, which wouldn't be able to generate much power anyway, because there's not a lot of space. But that means that the force from these muscles is transferred to the digits through very long tendons, very narrow, very strong, very long tendons. And they run, well, there's one layer that runs this far and one layer that runs to the fingertip. And it's here where it gets interesting for us. For that to work, as the tendons enter the fingers, the things that are actually gonna flex, really, they need to be tied down. They need to be strapped down so that they don't just, you know, bowstring across the joints, but they actually stay attached to the fingers and our fingers aren't big, fat, weird things that don't work. So the tendons of the flexor forearm muscles run into the fingers through a tunnel of ligaments. There are annular ligaments, um, which means that they form a ring. So they go from the bone around and back to the bone, forming a tunnel that the tendon runs through. Now, this tendon needs to move freely and easily. And in the body, when we have things like tendons and joints and things that need to move freely and easily, we use a synovial membrane, or rather two synovial membranes. So this ligamentous tunnel is actually made up of a number of an annular ligaments and cruciate ligaments, which I will cover in more detail in the future. Um, but inside there, 
they're lined by a layer of synovial membrane, which then folds back on itself to cover the tendon. So there are two layers of synovial membrane, and in between those two layers, there's a little bit of fluid, and the purpose of the synovial membrane is to make that fluid, this super lubricating, friction-free fluid, which allows our tendons to slide through this tunnel of ligaments, which lets us flex our fingers freely and easily. In trigger finger, or stenosing tenosynovitis, then we get inflammation of these structures. Inflammation of the tendon, probably. Now, tendons are made of really long fibrils, really long ropes of type 1 collagen, because that is the best collagen for uh, tensile forces. Uh, and what we see happening, as probably as a response to that inflammation, is we see chondrocytes appearing, we see type 3 collagen being laid down, we start to see a fibrocartilage being laid down. This isn't uncommon. When you have a tendon that passes around a pulley or round a bit of bone, it can adapt to that pressure. So tendons like tensile, they like tensile forces, they like being stretched, right? They don't like rubbing over something. Whereas cartilage is really good at being compressed, so it's pretty good at rubbing over something. So the tissue is responding to rubbing over something and becoming a fibrocartilage, kind of like a, a tendon with a bit of cartilage inside it. So a nodule forms here. Now, if you flex your finger and extend your finger, that tendon moves up and down a little way. That nodule needs to move up and down a little way. So as you flex your finger and the tendon moves that away because the muscle's been getting shorter, that nodule will move out of the ligamentous tunnel, right? Out of that synovial sheath. Now the nodule's outside the tunnel. And remember, this is very tightly strapped down. Ligaments aren't particularly stretchy here. They're really, really tough. So then it get, it's difficult for that nodule to pass back into the ligamentous tunnel. So depending upon the size of the nodule, you'll either get a click as it pops out, click as it pops back in again, or a click, and then the nodule is out of the tunnel and you can't, can't get it back into the tunnel so you can't straighten your finger. You might be able to force your finger straight or it might suddenly go pop and the, the nodule pops back into the tunnel. That is the anatomy of trigger finger. A little bit more anatomy. So the tendons here, there are actually two tendons running together and they are the tendons of the muscles flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. Flexor digit, dorum, superficialis is superficial, profundus means deep. So there are two tendons entering into that tunnel. The tunnel is called the fibrous digital sheath. It is made up or reinforced by a number of uh, ligamentous structures that tie it down. So we have these annular ligaments, as I said, forming a ring. We have cruciate ligaments forming a cross. Um, but it's this opening of the fibrous digital sheath where that nodule, if it pops out and in again, will cause the, the locking and the clicking of trigger finger. And this pulley here at this end, this first angular ligament gets called the A1 pulley. Uh, this is a particularly interesting one for climbers. I used to have a, a nice lump down here, probably actually caused by a tear of the A1 pulley of that annular ligament and then it repairing and making a nodule. Didn't have any locking, didn't have any trigger finger. The, the tendons move. Um, I then used to just strap these down with, with finger tape to hold it all together so I could keep climbing. This model shows slightly different dissection depths and slightly different structures for each finger. But the anatomy for each finger is the same. There's bone, there's one tendon, there's two tendons, and there's that. All those connective tissues tying the tendons down there. So they will all look like this. And then of course this gets covered by skin. Treatment options for trigger finger then for that nodule. So this is a change to the tendon caused by compressive loading. Um, that develops over time and you might catch this at different stages. You might catch it early, you might catch it late. Current NHS recommendations, first one is rest. Um, second one is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So we get the inflammation down. Remember this is an itis, so it is an inflammatory thing. So treat the inflammation locally or um, 
systemically. Um, the next one is you can splint the finger, so you fix it in place, that's enforced rest. Uh, the last one is surgical. So surgically, you can um, cut the annular ligament to open up that opening to the tunnel. And now the nodule's not getting stuck on anything. It moves up and down. And obviously, all of those things you should, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm teaching medical students. So this is what you need to know if you're a medical student. If you're somebody that has uh, this, these symptoms, you should go and see a doctor and get your hand checked out. There is a lot a very detailed, very beautiful, very cool anatomy going on in the hand. And the hand is really important to us. These normal functions we very much take for granted. And when they change, we notice it has an effect on the quality of life. So get it checked out. But the anatomy of trigger finger, I think, is very interesting, very mechanical. All right, see you next week. Uh, although I might take a couple of days off.